we spend the day touring Ocracoke Island along the North Carolina Outer Banks. We learn of the deadly cost of German U-boat attacks off its coast in World War II, and the legacy of a dead pirate who lived and died on the island, and in many ways, still lives today, and sampling some good local craft Love that will never need to hide Love will always rise above Whatever comes, we will be just fine If I am yours and you are mine Take my hand and let's fly away To another galaxy Hold me close, I want to feel your love Together we are free just so this is our first full day at Ocracoke, and uh, we're on island time. So Which means we're really, everything here is laid back. So we're just going to tootle. Tootle here and tootle there. But this is a very small island. Uh, matter of fact, we have parked the spider for the day, and we have taken up a new mode of transportation. These uh, beach cruisers. Beach cruisers. Uh, today we're going to go sightseeing and uh, talk about the history of the island a little bit. And, uh, yeah, maybe see where uh, Blackbeard met his demise. Yes. There's so much history here on Ocracoke Island, and one little snippet is from the era of World War II and the Battle of the Atlantic. Most people don't read about that in their history books anymore, and that's a sad thing. Uh, as the war started, Germany sent over a fleet of submarines to torpedo and sink as much shipping as humanly possible, not men of war, but commercial vessels to impact uh, our ability to uh, wage warfare you know, in Europe. One of the ships, one of the ships that were sank was a British trawler, and of the, how many crew members were on that, 90 some crew members? Their graves are marked over here. There were only four bodies that came ashore. Ever. Four. And they were buried here uh, and given uh, proper burials. It's cool that they have a, a ceremony, a memorial ceremony every year, and that um, folks from Great Britain come over for that occasion. For a long time, just these crosses marked the graves of the, uh, the British who were killed by the German submarine during World War II, and then only recently was the, uh, the granite dedicated, and the um, crosses had been stored under a building, <laughs> and so they uh, finally made a nice display. And I, I love, you can see all the indications that people have visited, and I'm going to use some our mark. Ocracoke Lighthouse, the second oldest in the nation that's in continuous use. It's uh, powered by electricity, although at one time it was powered by uh, whale oil, porpoise oil, and kerosene. And uh, it's not open, unfortunately, uh, for climbing up, but it's still uh, kind of cool. And this is the keeper's house, or was the keeper's house, now it's a private residence. Uh, How long has it been here? Well, so it's a member of the crowd. <laughs> Since 1823. 1823. Yeah. And action! <laughs> so we're at uh, Springer's Point Natural uh, Preserve. And this was famous because it was uh, the hangout of Edward Teach, better known as Blackbeard. And in September 1718, a group of pirates met here at Springer's Point for what's described as the largest pirate gathering on the mainland of North America. And it was also in this area nearby Teach's Hole where Blackbeard met his demise. Um, he was defeated in a fierce battle also in 1718 and legend has it that, um, that he was beheaded 
and thrown into the sea, but he swam around his ship several times before consumed by the sea. Um, anyways, kind of a, an interesting spot and, and it should be pretty as well. So what did they do with his head? Oh, they carried it on the ship back to uh, uh, Virginia, I believe, as a warning to pirates. And during, during the uh, War of Northern Aggression in the 1860s, uh, the United States government and, and the Confederacy, they both sides hired pirates to do their plundering for them. So pirates are bad, unless you're under a contract from a government, then they're okay. <laughs> All right, let's take a walk. So I mentioned the, uh, the submarine sinkings during World War II, and there's a story, there's a good story behind uh, all this. At the beginning of World War II, the number of German U-boats attacking merchant ships along the East Coast was so vast, the Navy simply could not keep up. So they solicited and received help from a volunteer organization called the Civil Air Patrol. These are civilian pilots who owned their own airplanes, and they uh, were assigned the duty of patrolling the coast up to about 60 miles offshore looking for German submarines. And that time, uh, submarines were air breathers, had uh, air breathing engines, so they had to surface unless they were on the attack, so they could be spotted. Plus, they didn't uh, submerge that deep, so they could also be spotted from the air. Uh, and the, the airplanes uh, were not equipped with radios at the time, so they were uh, given radios, and they would call in uh, the military to uh, attack the, the U-boat. Unfortunately, uh, the Navy was a little slow in responding, so the uh, Army Air Corps and the Navy finally, or eventually gave the Civil Air Patrol bombs. So civilians were actually uh, sent out to locate and attack German submarines. Uh, 700 plus submarines were sighted, uh, 50 some were bombed, three confirmed sinkings, all by civilians. Now this did not have a, a did not did not go down without a cost. 150 aircraft lost uh, because of weather and mechanical issues. Uh, none of them were actually shot down, from what I can find, and they uh, uh, suffered uh, 50 some odd casualties, fatalities, uh, and. Uh, I think about a dozen of these were women. So back before women were in combat, women were in combat flying attack missions against German submarines off the coast of the United States. Today, the Civil Air Patrol still exists. It is an official auxiliary to the United States Air Force. I had the honor to serve with them for a period of six years. Uh, at, I'm not sure what the total role is today, but at that time, the role of the Civil Air Patrol was civilian aircraft search and rescue, uh, a cadet program to uh, similar to the Boy Scouts, only it was an airborne type of organization uh, to teach young folks about aviation and to uh, uh, help Americans learn about aviation, which is based on what I've seen locally, uh, more people need to learn a lot more about aviation. Our accommodations on Ocracoke Island was Oscar's House Bed and Breakfast, located at 660 Irving Garish Highway. The house was originally built in 1940 by Joe Burris as a retirement home. It was the last private lighthouse keeper on Ocracoke Island before the Coast Guard took it over. Oscar was his son. Our hosts, Chad and Robin, maintain a very comfortable bed and breakfast. Since it's the off season, we found ourselves being the only guest in the property and had a chance to chat extensively with Chad and Robin. My personal favorite was the outdoor shower. We finished up the day over at the 1718 Brewing Company where we sample some local beer and have a light dinner. By the way, 1718 was the year that the pirate Blackbeard was killed on Ocracoke on the orders of the governor of Virginia. Had he only known that in years to come, his life would be celebrated in an industry called tourism, I scarcely think he could get his mind around that concept. We watch the sun go down and head back over to our accommodations for a good night's sleep. So how'd you like Ocracoke? Oh, I enjoyed it. Uh, this was the first time I had a chance to um, spend the night there. In the past, it was just a quick 
day trip, maybe have a meal and go back to uh, mm -hmm. to the main Outer Banks. Um, but it just has a charm. Uh, you, know, you feel like you're traveling back in time. Because there are no franchise or chain anything. All the gas stations, restaurants, hotels are all small, locally owned establishments. It was like going back to the 1940s or 1950s. Yeah, and it's such a, a compact village area that uh, you know nobody drove vehicles unless they were leaving the island. But um, there were plenty of um, uh, amenities. The ones we, we needed coffee. You know, there were good seafood, really. Had one of the best meals of yeah, our trip. Yeah, it was good. On the island, yeah. And, and it was kind of cool get, getting to know um, the history of the island. Um, I, um, yeah, there's just a lot of stories between the, the shipwrecks and I, I had, had, I guess I knew at one time, but I'd forgotten about the German U-boat activity uh, off the coast early in World War II. And, and you know, Blackbird, Blackbird, Blackbeard, <laughs> lots of stories about Blackbeard, but that's really more, more hype. <laughs> 300, almost 300 years after he died, he's still a selling point for the island. Yeah, but but there's a lot, lot there beyond him. I know you did some research about the Civil Air Air Patrol. Did did their efforts really help with the uh, actually? Yes, at the end of World War II, uh, some Navy records from the German Navy were uh, uncovered, and they actually withdrew the submarine fleet from the Atlantic coast because of the. Uh, 225,000 hours of patrol time uh, along the coast by the Civil Air Patrol, which yielded over 700 sightings and a couple of attacks and a few kills. Uh, so they decided that they could not operate near or at the surface, which is what they had to do because they were diesel engine submarines without risking being caught by the civilian airplanes and bombed and then the Navy get called in and finish the job. So yeah, quite Thank effective. Heaven. So, well, guys, we're going to call this one a day, and anything else? No, no. Thanks for watching. Uh, Y'all take care. Bye-bye.